Wow. Somebody's been playing with the sound machine. That was crazy loud. That scared me, and I was the one that said it. Do we all need to take a bathroom break now real quick? Is that... Is that uh... <laughs> Great to see you this morning. Happy Memorial Day weekend and uh, happy anniversary to the Crenshaws the, to, today. How, how many years and what a miracle it is that Miss Doris hasn't killed him? How many years? 62 years for the Crenshaws today. Is that crazy? Miss Doris, it's a miracle that you've been together that long, really, for sure, but it's also a miracle that you don't look at, how'd you, how, how old were you when y'all got married? No, just, to, you don't have to tell me, but uh, wow, that is fantastic, amazing and wonderful, and welcome to our uh, Sunday morning service with uh, Brother Fanny Pack over here. <laughs> get over here so the camera can see you, come on, get over here so the camera can see you, all right, just, just, uh, that, I don't think that's going to hold many hot dogs. Yeah, three pockets. <laughs> three pockets. So you're going to separate the uh, chicken sandwich, the peanuts, and the popcorn? And uh, I won't do peanuts. No peanuts. Why not? Well, it depends. It's, it's a dessert. It's later on. First, you got to fill up on hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken sandwiches, nachos, not so much on the fanny pack. Yeah. No. No, that wouldn't be good. No. That wouldn't be good. So you got a plan? Yes. You've got to have a plan. <laughs> You have to have a plan. <laughs> All right. The plan is that Vacation Bible School is just around the corner. In fact, one week from tonight is the beginning of this year's Vacation Bible School. Uh, yes, it is one week from tonight, and we will be having a short Vacation Bible School meeting right after the right after services this morning, just for just for a few minutes. Uh, but we do ask just a we get flowers also back there on the Welcome Center. If you flowers. Know, Flyers. Flyers. Oh, okay. Flyers. Flyers. I was going, I didn't see any flowers back there. You have there. a flyer, flyer in a flower? Somewhere. Where are you from? I'm from Texas. Texas, right? Texas. All right. All right. Yeah. I just. Texas. And so, uh, <clears throat> anyway, I think I'm off my, off my train of thought here. But uh, we will have, yes, flyers back there on the, at the Welcome Center. Better. Thank you. You go and you grab some, be able to go and uh, pick them up, pass them out to your neighbors. You have any kids, you know, family, anything else? Just make sure they know about next Sunday, uh, June 5th through the 9th, 8th, June 5th through the 8th. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Sunday through Wednesday. Sunday through Wednesday. It starts at 6 p.m. at 6 to 8. So we want to be look forward to, uh, we can still, if you haven't signed up yet, you still want to be a part of it. We go, we look forward, for, look forward to signing up back there. We'd love to have you. If or if you can't make it, we still, we covet your prayers. And that's for everybody this week. Amen. So we can only do so much. But we need, we need prayer to have God in there. We need, we need God to be working through these kids' lives. And so we need all the prayer that we can get. And you know, just, kind of just thinking how, how important uh, for VBS, I know there in, there in Dallas, the church we were at, our youth director there, he and, him and his wife, he, somebody invited his friends to go to, not his friends, but his friends had invited his, his kids to go to vacation Bible school. His kids came to vacation Bible school. Him and his wife just wanted to see what it was like. So they came to vacation Bible school. Both of them ended up getting saved. And they ended up, you know, years, fast forward a few years later, they became the youth directors at our church. So you wow. never know just the lives that's going to impact at vacation Bible school. So Wow, that is really cool. And next Sunday morning, the set will be up here. It's going to look fantastic here in the sanctuary as we get ready for this year's Vacation Bible School. Of course, that's Super Summer Sunday number two because Super Summer Sunday number one, and uh, we're already having summer, right? So uh, uh, tonight at Newman Park, we're going to have some hamburgers and hot dogs as a cookout, and then bring your glove, and, and uh, we've got a few bats and some balls and stuff, so you don't need to bring those, but... Uh, Come on out for a night of fellowship and some softball tonight. It'll be easy to hit home runs the way the wind's blowing. True. I'll give my fanny pack a test drive tonight. So I can, I can stick them in. Okay. Yeah. Trial run. Yep. I guess so. Yes. I like it. So that's tonight at 6 o'clock. Remember, it's 6 o'clock, and, and uh, we're going to have a great time of fellowship out there. Make sure you're here. Bring a friend with you. And uh, as Andrew said a few weeks ago, this is actually... 
uh, dual purpose because we're also having tryouts for the upcoming softball season in, in uh, August. So, uh, so bring your A game. That's what I'm saying, you know. I'm just kidding about that, all right? Some of you take me way too serious. Uh, this coming Tuesday is uh, the next open gym night. Andrew wanted me to, uh, uh, he's second teaming up in the uh, sound booth t today, so, uh, uh, but the, uh, uh, the uh, youth get together at, I forgot to ask you what time, six, thank you, six o'clock in the family center. Kiddos bring friends and uh, have a good time just with open gym. Last week, I think uh, Andrew said there was about 20 kiddos, and uh, so that's wonderful. This week, Sergio will be in there showing off. Sergio, welcome home. Yeah. All right. And, of course, uh, Sergio won't look the same next week because he will have started working with us on uh, this week as our summer intern. So uh, uh, excited about that and uh, glad to have you home, home from Boston. Yes, thank you very much. Tell us about the uh, pie auction, if you will. The pie auction is just right around the corner. It will be June 12th, right after the morning services. We'll go to the gym, and we'll be accept and uh, we'll have the pie auction. And that's just another just a fundraiser for a camp, uh, just to be able to go and raise money so that way the kids could go. And, and like Andrew's always said before, you know, the goal is that nobody will have to go, in the, no kid will have to pay for the camp. And so we go and we have the, the pie auction. We also will have the silent auction as well. And if you have any items you want to go and to donate to be able to, be able to go and put it in the silent auction, uh, then that we need to get those in by, I said, the silent auction is starting Wednesday, May 25th. So that was, I, that was last week, wasn't that it? That was last week. It was, yeah. Okay. Yep. So, we'll uh, get so uh, June the 12th for the silent auction and the dessert auction, always a fun time. And as Andrew mentioned last week, that uh, if you want to do like casseroles, things like that, they'll freeze. And, uh, you know, you can buy those and have supper a few months from now. So uh, always a great blessing. And uh, as we uh, have kind of been adding it all up, it's going to be, uh, if we take somewhere around 35 kids, which is what we're looking to probably take this year, it's, uh, that's upwards around $8,000. So, so uh, uh, just be in prayer. And uh, as always, we appreciate you baking your, your best goodies and bringing them so we can auction them off for the kids, as well as your silent auction items, too. Uh, Ladies' Wings is, uh, let's see, that's two weeks still. June 13th is uh, the next Wings meeting. And uh, then teenagers right after Vacation Bible School, Max Air. That's Thursday, June 9th. Cost will be about 12 bucks. Okay? So y'all can go jump around and have a good time. Work off some energy. Anything else? Uh, the Ranger game. That's July 15th. If you want to go, we have the sign-up sheet in the back. Just uh, go and sign up. The money, we're trying to get the money in by next week. So that way, it, it takes at least a month or so to get be able to send it all off and get the tickets back. So if you want to go to the Ranger game, I uh, just need to sign, you up, sign up back there on the, back on the, on the uh, Welcome Center. And it's also, it's your birthday, isn't it? It is my birthday, yes. And so make sure you go and you let Pastor welcome, wish him a happy birthday and everything. So... I, I'm surprised. I can't believe the bulletin didn't acknowledge that. It's like it's another important weekend or something like that. But uh, should have had my mug on the front of the bulletin today or something. It's so weird. I was at the DPS office because my driver's license expires this year, um, and I was at the DPS office a few weeks ago, and and uh, I was sitting there filling out the paperwork, you know, for my new driver's license, good for the next eight years. I actually don't have to go back in and get a new picture taken until I'm 70. I'm not telling you, I, I, I'm turning 54 today. That's weird, isn't it? So, so the picture that I took the other day is going to be my picture when I'm an old man. So I get down to the part where, you know, height, 5'10", weight, all the way down through, you know, and, and then it says hair color. And I looked up at the... Uh, I looked up at the lady and uh, I said, uh, black's not going to work anymore, is it? She goes, I don't think so. <laughs> Checked off the gray and, uh, and she goes, well, it could be worse. And I said, I don't know about that. But anyway, so there you go. My new driver's license has gray as my hair color. <laughs> what color is yours? Never mind. I want to ask. All right. Let's, <laughs> that was uncalled for, wasn't it? 
Mr. Fanny yes, Pack? Yes, it was. Okay. Anything else? I think that's it. Okay, let's have a word of prayer, and let's get serious. Lord, we love you, and we thank you so much for your love for us, your care for us. Thank you that we're able to uh, gather together today, fellowship, love on each other, welcome each other, talk to each other, and now, Lord, sing to you and also take the time that we need to take to remember those who have given the ultimate gift to our country, and that is their very lives. Thank you, Lord, for their service, for their sacrifice, and we don't want to ever forget the price that has been paid to keep our country free. Even though, Lord, we're not what we used to be, I still want to believe that you can still do a great work in our nation. And I know that that great work has to start right here where we are. So begin even today to convict and prompt us as a church to be who we need to be for you here in our city, to impact those around us each and every day for the great cause of Christ. Please take this service, take this time together, and meet with us. Holy Spirit, we welcome you right now into this, your sanctuary. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand together. We begin this morning honoring our nation by singing together the Star Spangled Banner. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in. Still there, oh, say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the As we continue to sing this morning, God bless America, I would like for you to begin to think of that person or those people that need to be remembered today so we can call them out by name here in just a moment, here in our service. Here we go. God bless America, land that I love, stand beside To the prairies, to the oceans, white with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home. Thank you. You may be seated as we get our ladies to move on out. And if you have someone you want to recognize by name today that has given their life in the service of our country, that is what Memorial Day is about, remembering those. Would you please stand? And we are going to remember those by name today. And uh, if we want to start right over here with Abby. 
Well, Abby oh, and okay. Catherine. Yes, sorry. Yeah, 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 and Catherine. Yes. <laughs> okay, my brother, uh, Demolee Reed, he was a Marine, and he was killed in Vietnam at the age of 22. Oh. Hmm. My uncle John, Jane Brown got killed over there, World War I. My goodness. Okay, Brother David. My uncle James W. Hargrove, Vietnam. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, Jennifer. Leslie, Leslie Davenport and my grandpa, William Rocky Jones, they are both in the Army. Okay. Okay. Miss Jody, getting the microphone to you right now. Gary Jeffries, he died in a uh, Iraqi storm. He was a best friend of my son. Oh. Anybody else? Yes, Brother John. Bill Saunders from Blackwell, who went down with the Scorpion in 1944. Mm. Okay. Yes, Brother Gerald over here. Homer Tischler, Vietnam, the killing in Vietnam. Mm. Anybody else? I have my uncle Sammy, Sammy Bradford, who was uh, killed in World War II. Anybody else? Okay, as the ladies come back up, let's sing God Bless America again. That's good. Oh, sorry, that was America the Beautiful. What, just the reprise of God Bless America. God bless America. the beautiful. Well, I really feel like we need to be standing up for these songs, don't we? Let's stand together. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of rain, for purple mountains majesties above the
I could with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Lord, thank you for our nation. Thank you that uh, we have a godly heritage, and I pray that we would do all that is in our <clears throat> abilities to keep striving to be at one and at peace with you individually, then as a nation. Thank you for the opportunity to give today. I pray your blessings on the gift and the giver. We continue our worship now through this giving in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated as we continue to sing Amazing Grace. for your good singing this morning. Kiddos, come on down front and uh, let's have our children's time with Brother Phil. All right. This is the beginning of summer. With the beginning of summer, it comes a lot of times. People are out at the pool. People are out there at the vacation time. People go to the beach. So I'm going to let the fanny pack kind of do a multi-purpose thing today. Um, we're going to talk about lifeguards. Have anybody ever been a lifeguard? Just, oh, a couple of us, okay. Oh, several, we got quite a few. So one thing uh, about lifeguards, they got to be what? You got to be, you be, you be ready, right? You gotta be able to. You gotta be able to watch. You gotta, you gotta be able to see. And so, I got my little. Let me go ahead and get the first thing out. You gotta have. You gotta have sunglasses. I say you gotta have sunglasses. It kind of makes sense because if you have sunglasses on, the lifeguards able to go and they're able to watch the, the sun off the or the water is not glaring in their eyes. They're able to, be able to focus on what's out there. Maybe you're at the beach and the sun's hitting off the sand and it's kind of glaring on glaring in your eyes. So as, so as a lifeguard, you have to be able to go and be able to watch, be able to go and be able to see what's going on. Maybe there's somebody that's in trouble, kind of struggling while they while they're swimming. You have to be able to go and be watchful. And as Christians, we're like spiritual lifeguards. We have to be on the watch as well. 
We got to be able to see other people that are struggling. We got to go and be, we got to be, we can't be blinded by the worldly things. We got to have it's almost like our spiritual eyesight on. We got to be able to go and watch and see the people in need, the people that have that people and they need Jesus. Also, as a lifeguard, you got to, let me see if I can get this out here. You got to have a whistle. A whistle. I'm not going to blow up because of the mic for the microphone, but you got to have a whistle. A whistle that way. That's when people are warning. Maybe they're at the pool and they're running on, on you know, down the pool. And you know they're going to fall and get hurt. Maybe there's somebody kind of some horseplay out there. Maybe you're at the beach. You see a dorsal fin come out of the water. You know, you got to be able to go and blow a whistle. That's the sign of danger. That's why, that's a warning. That's then you need to go and warn somebody. Hey. You need to start slow down, quit running. Hey, you need to sit there and hot, stop horse playing, stop, you know, dunking that person for like a couple of minutes underneath the water. It's not good. You know, or if you see something out there at the beach, and it's like a warning. As Christians, we know that we have a home in heaven. But we also know that those who do not have Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, that's not their case. They're going to be separated from God. And so we gotta be able, we gotta see that warning. We gotta be able to go and no, he had a warning. Say, hey, you know what? And, and and try to go and get them to come to church. Try to go and tell them about Jesus. We need to go and then we need to warn them about what's to come. Now you also you gotta have some sunscreen. You know, lifeguards always see it on the, just their nose. I mean, maybe that's the only place they burn. I don't know. You never own if they put it on the rest of their body or anything like that. But I know for me. If I was a lifeguard, I'd need like a big, I would need a big bottle of, of, of sunscreen. And so sunscreen is pretty important. It's there to protect you. If you're a lifeguard and you saw somebody drowning and you kind of, oh, I need to act fast, I need to jump up, and you got a sunburn, it's kind of hard to get out there fast. But so as Christians, we got to be protected. The Bible says guard your heart. The Bible says we need to go, and if we're in sin, if we're, not being, if, we're not, if we're not guarding our heart, it's hard to go and see other, those others that are in need if we're not protecting our own selves. So we need to make sure that we are guarding, we are protecting. And the last thing you want to go and you want to see when you go out there to the beach or to the pool, you don't want to go and see that sign that, sign, that says lifeguard not on duty. That means there's nobody there to watch you. That means there's nobody there to, decide to go and to help you if, if you're in need. Same thing as far as us as, as spiritually, as Christians. We're spiritual lifeguards. We're supposed to help people, help save, bring them to Christ. If we're not on duty, then who's going to tell them about Jesus? That's why we go and we have those pictures back there of all the missionaries. We have our the Laternos here as, as missionaries. That's why it's important. They have, to be, they have to be able to go to other countries and tell people, and they have to be spiritual lifeguards and tell other people about Christ so they, they know how to be saved. What if you're at your school? I know you're out of school when you go back to school in your neighborhoods. Are you a spiritual, life, are you a spiritual lifeguard? Are you telling other people and showing them, how, inviting them to church, telling them to go and how to, how to be saved? Maybe for our jobs and our jobs, are, are our own family, we might be, God might, they might not be in a, you might go to a job or you might have a family that you're the only spiritual lifeguard in your whole, in your, at your whole job or your whole family. We cannot be on duty. They can't afford that. we got to make sure we're doing our job as a lifeguard, as a spiritual lifeguard, and to make sure we're telling other, others about Christ. Let's go ahead and bow our head for prayer. We'll get and be dismissed and go over to Kids Quest. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, Lord, we just thank you so much for your love for us. We thank you, Lord, for those that have laid down their life to for us to be, for this country, for us to be able to have the spiritual freedoms that we have, that we can come and we can worship you freely. We also, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, so much for the, also for the sacrifice that you gave for us so we could have a spiritual home in heaven. We ask, Lord, just be with us uh, today, be with as the kids we go and we learn more about you, the Lord, that we uh, teach them, just help them to hide your word in their hearts. Also, Lord, we just ask, just be with pastors, he goes and he preaches your word, just give him the words to say to the Lord, you know, the, the, uh, the things that people are facing, you know, the things that are in people's uh, hearts and their minds, Lord, that they're going through, the Lord, we just ask, Lord, just give them comfort. Give them comfort, give them conviction. Whatever the case may needs to be today, Lord, we just ask just to meet that need. 
We ask things most precious and holy name. Amen. As the children are leaving and headed on to their class, I ask that you please join me in worship this morning. Sing along with us as the words are on the screen. I want you to think about what worship is, who you worship, and why you worship. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. This heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. And here I am to worship, here I am to bow down, here I am to say that you're my God, you're all together lovely, all together. So highly exalted, glorious in heaven above. Humbly you came to this earth you created, all for love's sake became poor. And here I am to worship. Here we are to worship, here we are to bow down, here we are to say that you're our God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to you. Come on now. Here I am to bow down here. 
Cause here we are to worship. Here we are, Lord, we're bowing down. And here we are to say, oh God, you're our King. You're altogether lovely. Oh, you are so worthy. And you're altogether wonderful. Oh, how wonderful you are to me. And we'll never know how much it costs to see our sin upon your cross we'll never know how much it costs to see our sin upon your cross call upon the name of the Lord and be saved Lord, here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Lord, here we are to say that you are our God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy. You're altogether wonderful to me. One more time. Here we are to worship. Here we are to bow down. Here we are to say that you're our God. You're altogether lovely, altogether worthy, altogether Lord, here we are to worship. God, we really want you. We need you. And worship tells us and proves to us how low we are and how high you are, how insignificant we are and how hugely significant you are. Please uh, continue to let our focus be on, on you and what you want to say to us today. I uh, trust that our hearts are prepared and ready now to receive your word. And so we give this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Please turn with me to Genesis chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. Find verse 10 when you get there. Today's song service finishing up in that fashion fits right in with today's message. As we open up our at least part of summertime sermon series on vacation spots, different spots through the Bible, different cities, different places in the Bible that are uh, worthy of our attention for various reasons. Uncertain seasons in our lives always land us 
in some interesting spots as we journey through this life. A couple of weeks ago when we hosted the uh, Central West Texas Fellowship, a man came who had, has been in some very interesting spots in his ministry throughout his lifetime, and a small town kid from West Texas, I never thought that I would be able to be in some of the different areas that we have been able to be in and minister in and pastor in, i.e. Salt Lake City. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that I would ever be in Salt Lake City, nor really, I'll be honest with you, I didn't really want to. I mean, but that's where God wanted us. And in the course of our two years there, um, there was a pastor's fellowship, very few and far between there, but it was in Pocatello, Idaho. And I remember driving north on Interstate 15 out of the Salt Lake Valley into the uh, Ogden Valley and on up into the northern regions of Utah and passing the, the state sign that said, Welcome to Idaho. Weird. Very strange. I had to call my mom. I mean, that's one of those mom calling moments, you know? You know, I got my Nokia block phone. Do you all remember those that had the little attached antenna to them, and uh, that's what I, doot, 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 doot. I think it was 325-559-5609, that was my home number, and uh, called my mom, and I said, mom, you're never going to believe where I am. She goes, I have no idea. I said, I'm in Idaho. She goes, Idaho? <laughs> Telling you, we just never know where we may end up. As we journey through this life, we might find ourselves in an unfamiliar place today due to any number of circumstances, our health, our jobs, our family, or even the community we're living in. You may be going, what in the world am I living in Sweetwater, Texas for? We may even be looking around thinking, how in the world did I get to this place? Most of the 365 plus two days that we were in, or times two days that we were in Salt Lake City, I looked out the office window at the 11,000 foot granite peak that stared me in the face every day and went, what am I doing here? It was hard. At times it was devastating because uncertain seasons in our lives land us in some interesting spots. And I know this, Jacob knows exactly how you feel today. You see, growing up with the name that meant the one who grabs the heel of someone else, or literally translated, that means he was the one who trips everybody up. He's the, he's the one who is deceptive. And Jacob was very practiced in this. So growing up with the name heel grabber put some pressure on him to perform. I mean, you know what it is to get involved in the uh, practical jokes back and forth, right? I remember one time teenagers do not get any ideas when I mention this. That we got rolled. Y'all know what that is? Anybody know what that is? As precious as toilet paper is these days, let's not start that practice up anymore. Our, we had probably, what was our pecan tree, 40 feet tall or something like that beside our house. It was huge. And we went out one morning and our teenagers had rolled us. And you know how that usually goes, right? That if I get it done to me, I'm going to do it to somebody else, but I'm going to probably take it an extra level, shave and cream their car or, you know, something like that. I mean, you, again, don't get any ideas behind this, right? We, we okay? 
Vincent, don't get any ideas. Okay. So, so this is all going on, and Kim walks out, and you know, Kim is just real level-headed and mild. She is hacked. I'm talking about she is next level angry. And I said, okay, I heard something or read something a long time ago that you can get rid of this toilet paper just by simply lighting it on fire. Oh, it worked out. It actually was fine. You, you know, don't do it right now, by the way. The, you know, burn up the whole city. But, but it just burned. You just light on fire and it just runs up through the tree and it burns. It's not hot enough to burn the leaves or anything like that. And so we got rid of the toilet paper, and I, as, after it was done, I looked at Kim, and I said, we are telling nobody. We are not even going to ever mention this to anybody in the church that we got rolled. And what did that do? It immediately extinguished it, because we had a bunch of wise guys in our youth group back then, a bunch of thugs. And I, I said, we are not going to even acknowledge that that happened. And it ended it. But not for Jacob. Because Jacob's a one-upsman. Jacob would have been the one that says, you know, if I'm going to get tripped up, oh, just wait till I get a hold of you. Or better yet, he was scheming all the time as to how he could one-up somebody else. Boy, did he ever perform well at this on two occasions he got his older brother, didn't he? First occasion, he got his birthright because Esau, his brother, was older than he was by minutes because they were twins. But he got his birthright for a pot of beans. Then later on, he tricked their dad, Isaac, yes, the same Isaac that we studied several months ago now that had Rebecca found for him in the desperate search to find the bride, that Isaac, he tricked their dad, Jacob did, into gaining Esau's blessing. Now that was huge. And it was, it was always determined to be the oldest child's blessing. They were going to get the double portion of the inheritance and all sorts of things went along with that in their traditions. Jacob was good. He was very good, or Esau was really dumb. I'm not real sure exactly which, but it could be a little bit of both. So like Jacob, when we run into him here in Genesis 28, we're a product of our recent and past choices. True. Somebody say true. Okay. We are a product of our recent and past choices. Where we are today and where we go tomorrow is actually affected by yesterday. Whether we really like that or not, it's true. But as we find out with Jacob, God's actually taking us somewhere. So, yeah, everything that we're doing, and this is going to, this just blows my mind every time I think about it. But everywhere that we have been and are and are going, God has known all of it and actually has, has a, a purpose, a place, a destiny in mind for us. Even in the midst of the Choices that we might make. That's crazy. For Jacob, God has taken him somewhere. And for that, I am very thankful. Because we can learn today from Jacob that God was working in his life even though Jacob thought he had it all together and he was who he was and he was pretty proud of who he was. As Jacob, the heel grabber, one who trips up everybody else, is the king of the practical joke. 
I think we can all be thankful together for God leading Jacob to our first vacation spot. It's a city by the known of Beth, known as Bethel. And that's where we are today as we read in Genesis 28, verse 10. Jacob went out from Beersheba. That is where he and Isaac and Rebekah and Esau lived. And that's where he had grown up. At this point in time, he's probably very well into adulthood. Okay? Not married yet, but very well into his adult life. And he went out of Beersheba toward Haran. Now, some of you remember from our desperate search in Genesis 24 that that's where Abraham and his family is originally from. Do you remember uh, Rebecca's dad's name was Bethuel? And do you remember that she had a brother? His name was what? Do you remember? Laban. Well, if you keep reading, Laban gets back in the story here pretty quick. And uh, with Laban, Jacob actually meets his match. So just as long as you think you're the best heel grabber ever, there's somebody else that's probably going to be better than you. A little life lesson there, and I just threw that in so that maybe your interest would be piqued and you'd read what happens next. So as he goes toward Haran, remember that is about a 550-mile journey. And he's not going to make it in a Toyota. He's going to make it likely with maybe one animal and himself, because he's had to leave in a hurry because Esau is out to get him after he stole his blessing. So he didn't get a chance to pack a whole lot. I hope he had a go bag, because that's how quickly he needed to leave. So he lighted, okay, verse 11, upon a certain place. And in that certain place where he just happened to light, he tarried all night, because the sun was set, it was getting dark, and he took some stones of that place and put them for his pillows, and he laid down in that place to sleep. Now, he had to have a makeshift cot in the desert. And the way he did that probably was he gathered up little stones, little pebbles, stuff like that, and probably made him just a little single bed, just a little place to sleep, and then he would set a larger rock for his head. Now, that sounds really comforting. Comfy, doesn't it? So that leads us to the first thing we see is this is not your daddy's Serta. All right? This is not your daddy's Serta. Life's journey is not always comfortable. You know, somebody say amen to that because we know that's true. Matter of fact, you're sitting on a pew today, which might not be the most comfortable thing you've ever sat in. Can I get an amen? I, I have always thought that uh, might as well just put recliners up because most of you are going to sleep through this anyway. You know? But I don't know. Maybe, maybe Jacob was just exhausted emotionally and even physically because from Beersheba to where he is laying down that night is about a 50 mile walk. So imagine walking from Sweetwater down the interstate to Abilene. Right? Well, Clyde's a little further than 50 miles but somewhere close, right? That's about the walk. And imagine that they just happen to be having an inordinate early summer. Can I get an amen? It's hot. And imagine how tired he must have been after a 50-mile walk. Maybe part of that walk, too, was uh, looking behind his back, making sure he wasn't being followed. Maybe he walked a lot on the rocks so that he wasn't kicking up a whole lot of dust, so that if Esau decided, I'm going to get my revenge now on that stinking hill grabber, that he wouldn't be as easily found in the desert. So the fact here that Jacob, according to verse 11, lighted upon a certain place leads us to know that he was not here by accident. 
When the Bible has a phrase like that, you need to know immediately that God's doing something. He was not here by accident. Nor is it an accident that we get in places in our lives that are uncomfortable. Can you relate? Are you with me? Just like Joseph earlier, Moses, excuse me, Joseph's a little later, I apologize for that. Moses later, Elijah, Jeremiah, hey, even Jesus. We will find ourselves in places of discomfort. Didn't Jesus actually say that he didn't even really have a place to lay down his head during his earthly ministry? That means he always slept in the guest room. For Jacob, this was about to be a night to remember forever. Though he made himself a bed of rocks and laid himself on a larger rock as his pillow for sleep. Verse 12. And he dreamed. Well, first of all, we can immediately know that if he's about to dream something, that God can do something through dreams. So he's laid down in an uncomfortable place, but he falls asleep, likely because he's exhausted, and he dreams. And behold, a ladder. Maybe a better rendition of that is a, is a staircase. Okay? A staircase. A ladder set up on the earth. The top of it reached to heaven. Behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it, going up and down this staircase, back and forth from heaven down to where Jacob is. This is the dream he's having. Back and forth, heavenly beings, angels of God, back and forth between heaven and where Jacob is sleeping. And behold, the Lord stood above this staircase and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, the God of Isaac as well. The land whereon you are lying and sleeping tonight, to thee will I give it, and also to your seed. So he gets a promise in the midst of this that where he is right now is where he will be again someday. Not now, but someday. He's going to get to go home. Now, can I tell you that being from Breckenridge, Texas, to me, having a hometown, it is always a really cool experience to go home. It just is. Now, it's different than it was back when I grew up. But you can ask my kids, they know all about my hometown. Why? Because every time that we go to my hometown, I show them the same things that I've shown them a hundred times before. And I was so excited when Hannah came into the family and we could go to Breckenridge. So I could show Hannah all the things about my hometown. It was a special place. And so ultimately, Jacob is getting this promise, hey, you're going to get to come back here. You'll be back. And and there's that thought, since the Lord's speaking, that there'll be better terms later on. Verse 14. Jacob, your seed, your kids, your family tree, will be as the dust of the earth. Thou shalt spread abroad to the west, to the east, to the north, the south. And in thee, in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God says to Jacob in this dream, I am with you. And I'm going to keep you in all places, whether thou goest. And I'm going to bring you again into this land. For I will not leave you until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. Boy, this is an incredible dream. Is it not? It is an incredible dream that Jacob has. God actually reveals himself to Jacob and talks to him. The dream featured this ladder, of course, a staircase that reached from heaven to earth. Those heavenly angels, beings, were making their way up and down, back and forth. That gets your attention. So for a man who had never 
at this point in his life, really experienced the presence of God very strongly, I would say this is going to be an impactful circumstance for him. See, Jacob has grown up doing what Jacob wanted to do. It served him well until, of course, Esau, he looked at Esau and he said, uh, you resemble Hulk Hogan. And uh, I don't think I really want to tangle with you. Rebecca, his mom comes up to him and says, well, we blew it. And guess what? You got to leave. And you got to go back to my people in Haran. And Jacob goes, I'm out of here because I don't want to wrestle with Hulk Hogan. He'll have his wrestling match later, right? In the same place, by the way. He's coming back full circle eventually. I'm telling you, man, this was an impactful dream. Jacob has spent his entire life relying on his own strength, his own cunning, his own reputation. Does that sound familiar to us today? Relying on our own strength, relying on our own family name, relying on our own reputation, relying on the things we think we have. God has brought him to this place and is showing him something. He's reaching down from heaven at this moment in time to get Jacob's attention. Verse 16, Jacob awaked out of his sleep and he said, Surely the Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That is the personal side of God, Jehovah, if you will, ultimately would be fulfilled by Jesus. And the, be, uh, where, where are we? Jacob awaked out of his sleep, said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I didn't know it. He was afraid. You would be too. And said, how dreadful. The word dreadful is a pretty bad English word right there for what we would know this as. This word dreadful actually means how awesome. How awesome is this place? This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Jacob rose up early in the morning, took the stone that he had placed for his pillows, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, which means, verse 17 tells us, the house of God. He gets a daytime revelation. The morning light dawns upon the place, And immediately he is shaken by this dream. And he realizes his creator is talking to him. Suddenly all of my ways and all of the ways that I think I've got to make it through this world come full circle and and Jacob's like, uh, uh, I'm really not as bad as I thought I was bad being good or with it as I thought I was. So this was a personal message from God, and Jacob was able to hear it. He also began to realize that the presence, or realize the presence of God in his life. Guys, probably for the first time. This was a moment that needed marking. On this Memorial Day weekend, there are many markers out there for those who have given their all, right? We were at the uh, cemetery in Arlington, Virginia, and to look out across that place, Kim and I made a stop one time in Jackson, Mississippi at a Civil War cemetery, moving, absolutely moving because of the memorials that are out there. And so Jacob, when he woke up, he said, uh, I got to set this pillow that I used last night up to be a pillar. And then I've got to pour some oil over it. I've got to consecrate this place. That's what that is doing. I've got to know that this is a holy place so that when this 
when this dream and this promise is fulfilled, I can come back to this place, and this place is standing. When he gets back to this place the next time, guess what he does then? After all of this relationship with God, which is now beginning here, continues on through his time with Laban, ultimately he meets Esau again, and he sets up an altar here at that time. A place where he can worship God. But right now, Bethel is the place where he first realizes the presence of God in his life. It was awesome enough for him to name the place, the house of God, Bethel. And he set that rock up. And he would always remember this night. You agree with that? He would always remember. This is a very special place. Today, right here in this place, may be one of the most significant moments we have ever experienced in this life. Our past experiences have brought us to this present time with God. We may see ourselves in Jacob. We may see ourselves in Jacob. The one who's trying to figure it all out. The one who thinks he can get his way in and get his way all the way through life. He's just smart enough, smarter than you. But he finds out that he's not smarter than his creator. We may also relate to Jacob in the fact that our past has not been so great. Yet, God is still pursuing you today. Your Creator might be trying to get your attention. Like Jacob, we need to see this as awesome. It's an awesome thing. Man, when I laid down last night, I didn't realize that this was an awesome place. To spend the night. It might be time to start heeding God's approach to us. What's He been doing to you and in you in recent days? How has He been attempting to get your attention? Today's message brings us to a daytime revelation that we might need to remember right now because this is a holy time we are about to spend with God. And it can be awesome for you if you realize it. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. And let's stand together this morning. As dear Lord, we come before you right now, needing you and asking you to use your word and the preaching of your word to bring us to our Bethel today, to bring us to know you as Savior if someone is here and never trusted you, believed in you, accepted your gift of Jesus. Others may be here today, and we are believers, but boy, we just kind of been doing our own thing and relate to Jacob in that way. And maybe today needs to be a day of reconciliation and renewal and confession, surrender. This time for Jacob changed him forever. He would never forget this, and Maybe today, Lord, in this time of invitation, you'd do something that would never, ever be forgotten in all of eternity in somebody's heart today. For that, we will thank you and praise you and lean on you and look to you. In Jesus' name, amen. As we begin to sing this morning, you come. Man, I'm telling you, if the Lord is speaking to you like he spoke to Jacob in that dream, you come right now.
now. Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for have one more verse today. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for Thanks, Miss Jenny. Thank you. you. May be seated for just a moment. Um, Kenneth and uh, Susan Sorrell are coming and filling out a little paperwork over here for us to join our church this morning. But let me just tell you something that's kind of cool about this. About two things, actually. Um, so, uh, Brother David saw Kenneth, an old classmate, at a funeral service. I believe is the story, and and it was a few weeks before Friend Day, and he said, "Well." you know, we're having friend day in a couple of weeks. Why don't you just come to Broadway and, and see what it's like? They, they've they been here ever since. And uh, come to join our church today. And uh, that is a really cool byproduct, outward uh, expression of, of what friend day is is really all about. And I'll also tell you something else that uh, um, we, uh, I've been talking to our leadership for the last uh, uh, couple of uh, meetings about uh, getting together a new member class, which uh, uh, as as the Sorrells come today, I already told Kenneth the other day that I'd, I'm just going to recommend it to them and to anybody else that is interested in joining our church. It's going to uh, it's coming together right now, so we're still a few weeks away from getting it started. But it's going to be a three night class. There's going to be you'll have a lot of information about the church to to read over and things and get to know who we are while we get to know who a new member is, right? And so, uh, so this is all a part of this, this coming together process. And uh, um, so it is going to be a really uh, advantageous thing 
because, you know, when, when you come to join a church, it, it's, that's a pretty big decision. And, uh, and it's a pretty big decision for the people, but it's also a big decision for us as a church. And so, uh, so it's something that we want to, to let the Holy Spirit lead in very, very steadily. Now, if you guys want to come on up and the hard rows, y'all want to come stand with them? You, I know you're gonna, you don't have to play the piano. We can just go a cappella here. Is that all right, David? You guys come on stand with Kim, stand with, up with him as well. And uh, I'll tell you that uh, officially that Kenneth is coming on uh, promise of a letter from the First Baptist Church of Rotan, and Susan is coming uh, on promise of a letter from Trinity here in town. And so if you're excited to welcome them into fellowship with us here at Broadway Baptist Church, would you let that be known by saying a great Broadway Baptist Church, amen. 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 All right. Do you guys want to say anything? Speak now or forever hold your peace, right? Maybe later. Okay. Hey, that's a good answer right there, Ken. Maybe later. All right. So uh, let's stand together this morning and y'all make your way right here to the middle. That way it doesn't clog up. Yeah. Yeah. Move on over here. You give it, I know you probably don't want to be the center of attention, but we're going to come by and, uh, and shake their hand, tell them how happy you are to uh, welcome them as members here at Broadway today. So uh, let's uh, let's be dismissed by singing just the last part of God Bless America again this morning as we dismiss. Here we go. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. See you tonight at 6 at Newman Park.